I'll kill you. <gasps> is dear Norma in trouble? I think her life is in danger. out there, ladies. That's rough, rough, rough. better if we get out of the house. What do you say to dinner and a movie? What do you say to just dinner? A movie. Look, say something before this turns into a soliloquy. Oh. All right, let's go to dinner. Come on. <sighs> Maybe we can talk. It would help me if I knew what's bothering you. I, I don't want to pry. Well, then don't, dear. Wait here, I'll go get the car. If you come any closer, I'll kill you. How would listen to me? The man I saw this morning was not from the police. Don't make me hurt you. You're my brother. Howard, stay away. <gasps> Madeline thrust the knife into the burled walnut desk. Oh, I did too. Looks. I would say so. Hmm. Shattering the veneer into glistening fragments. Her bluff worked. How it stopped. Bewilderment replaced his rage and fear. Suddenly, she felt the familiar pity for those faded blue eyes that could so rarely look into hers directly. I think, dear, that Howard's eyes were brown in the last chapter. Oh. Well, f blue eyes fade better than brown. Leave them blue. Where was I? Oh, uh, let me see. This is your best chapter yet. It's masterful. Thank you. Uh, Madeline's eyes were drawn against her will to the couch where Gertrude lay sprawled on her back. Blood! Sprawled, dear? Sprawled. Blood spurted from the slashed breast. Blood also stained the exposed thigh. 
and the gossamer yellow hair was a wildly disheveled mass over the staring blank eyes. Was it possible, Madeline wondered, that Howard could be capable of such violence, of murder? Well, that wraps up chapter eight. <sighs> Poor Howard. I don't think I'm gonna like his being killed. Why do you think he'll be killed? Because <laughs> he's related to your leading character. And in all your works, you make a point of killing off very close relatives. Oh, now, gee, let's not get into that invalid, tiresome, laborious discussion again. I'm not killing you. Howard will be killed. Yes. But ingeniously. Oh, of course. Shall we go on? No, that's enough for tonight. Shall we have a little tipple? Ooh. But first, let me read back this, make sure I got it right before we start. Uh, Madeline's eyes were drawn against her will to the couch where Gertrude still lay sprawled on her back. Blood spurted from the slash breast, blood too, stained the exposed thigh and the gossip. Well, that's enough. Uh, I don't want to hear any more. That's horrid. Norma, why was he trying to kill you? You, you didn't want to go out tonight. You were frightened. You've been warned. Dear, will you go home? It's that book. It's something to do with that For book. For heaven's sake, will you go home? Oh, you're impossible. How tall are you, anyway? I always gave the illusion of height on the screen. Films make most actresses seem heavier, but somehow I always seem to be taller. Norma. You're not answering me. I have answered you. I said go home. You want me to call you when I get home? Not unless you want to wake me. You make me feel so helpless. Well, baby, what's a mother for? Maraschino cherry. Now for the Falernum. Oh, gee, let me fix it. You make such a to-do about it. But that nice waitress in Trath's insists it's the touch of Falernum. That's enough of a touch. And the hell with the maraschina cherries. Who could that be at this hour? Dear, it's not your killer. It's a woman. A woman? How do you know? Because women ring once, men ring twice. Why, I'm impressed. Thank you. It could be a couple. Be careful, and don't take the chain off the door. Dear, we don't have a chain on the door. I don't think we have time to put one on. I'm just never going to write again after dark. Yes? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the wrong apartment. We like it. May I help you? Oh, I'm looking for Lieutenant Stephen Ostrovsky. They told me at the police station he'd be here. It's the right apartment. He lives here? No, he visits here. And not as often as he should. I'm his aunt, Gwendolyn. Oh, how do you do? I'm Mary Nero. Please come in. And this is Stephen's Aunt Ernesta. Hello. Don't I know you? I don't think so, but I do know you. I, I've read all your books, and I saw you on the Carson show the other night. You have great legs. Oh, thank you. Come in. Stephen isn't here. Could we help? I don't think so. He often confides in us. Is it a police matter? No. Not, oh, not yet. Oh, this doesn't make much sense. You're apprehensive. You sense that someone you know is in trouble. How did you know? Oh, Ernest is superbly observant. True. <laughs> now, who is it that you... Please sit down. Your mother. Yes. How did you know? Oh, no, dear, I'm not that clairvoyant. You resemble your mother, your Norma Treat's daughter. The likeness is uncanny. Oh, do you know her? Know her? She was in our play. Is dear Norma in trouble? 
I think her life is in danger. <laughs> That's something you read in a melodrama, not something you say. Her life is in danger. Has she been threatened? Well, someone tried to run her down tonight and then threatened her on the phone, I think. Did you hear what was said? No, but I saw her reaction. And the other night at a restaurant, Mother was on the wrong side of several martinis and started talking about her book. Her book? Yes, she's about to publish her autobiography. I haven't seen it, but I... I think she was indiscreetly explicit about her past, and if you know Mother... Oh, the five divorces, all those leading men, and the political scandal. You know Mother. My sister hasn't missed an issue of Photoplay magazine since it first came out in 1923. Go on with your story, dear. Oh, well... The owner, Alexander. Alexander Scalamandri? Yes. A superb chef. What about Alexander? Well, he was at our table, and he said to Mother that it was his healthy conjecture that she would be ill-advised to publish such a book. Oh, that sounds like dear Alexander. He does love to play with words. And so often loses. Where's your mother now? At home. Would you feel better if we got her out of the house? She won't leave. We'll call her and ask her to dinner. It's something we've been meaning to do for a long time anyway. Uh, how, when did you last see Mother? Uh, 1946. What's the number, dear? 555-4721. She doesn't answer. But that's impossible. She's compulsive. She, she had just pay phones. shouldn't be here, you shouldn't be here, we shouldn't be here. That's a very natural progression, Barney. It's wrong. It's shorter if you turn down. He knows that. I know that. He's very proud. He was a patrolman for 20 years. He has a grid map of the city for a nervous system. Well, we should have waited for the lieutenant to call the police. And tell them what, Barney? That somebody didn't answer their telephone. Then you call the phone company. Well, they're less interested than anyone in whose phone isn't working. Especially at this hour of the night. It's wrong. Beneath that rough exterior is an impossible interior. But beneath that is something well worth discovering. He's supposed to spy on us for our nephew. Keep us out of trouble. And he hates it. So the less he knows, the less guilty he feels. And the less his ulcer acts up. Oh, it's the next street on... I know that.
Nobody home. But the lights are on. Well, I got a watch on, too, but that doesn't mean it's working. She probably went to bed. That's why she didn't answer the phone. Shall we go home? Barney? Watch your step. That's it, ladies. Tread lightly. Whoops. Train's about to leave the station. There we go. Do you have a key, dear? No, I don't. She could have gone out. She hasn't been out of the house alone for months. Ernesta, how do we get in? I don't know, G. No, 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 no. That's breaking and entering. A violation of the New York Penal Code. Please, it's, it's not like her not to answer the phone and the door. I know she's home. All right, but it's wrong. It's wrong. It's dead wrong. couldn't possibly have fallen in that position without knocking over one of those and -irons. Trying to fake a suicide? Pretty feeble attempt. No powder burns in the body, the gun still in her hand. Uh, we'll run the gun through for fingerprints. You won't find any, but run it through anyway. Well, and get a ballistics test. Have the lab call me as soon as they have anything. Right. Will this do? Oh, that's perfect. Where's Miss Nero? Uh, in the library. Uh, how about your aunts? They look reasonably comfortable. Have them wait. I want to speak to Miss Nero first. Miss Nero? This may help. Be any delayed reaction. I'm feeling what I can feel. Mm -hmm. Considering you didn't know your mother very well. Research? Observation. You're right. I didn't know her. It was a 
birth certificate relationship. She left my father and me shortly after I was born. Cleared out the joint savings account, headed for Hollywood. How did you and your mother rediscover each other? It was a tender reunion in a taxi. I, uh, I began seeing her on and off. I don't know why. We, we had dinner once, twice a week. Didn't make much sense. We fought more than we talked. I regret the absence of tears tonight. They were used up more than 20 years ago. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'd like to go upstairs. No more. Not just now. Oh, Miss Nero, there is one... One more question. Do you have any idea who might have threatened your mother? No. Okay. Lieutenant, we're almost finished with it. Okay. I'll visit my ass. Well, I think I'm owed a simple explanation, although I don't expect to get one. But how did you get into this house? Did the killer leave the door open? Or did I just leave the door open by suggesting that the door was left open? <clears throat> I let him in. Well, that explains them. How did you get in? Oh, Lieutenant, you know how I got in. I... It was wrong. Now, if you need me, I'll be in the car. My, my plugs are acting up. Now, I... Hey, are you getting a cold? No, it's just... Such an unusual scent. Saint Cassette. Did Norma use it? No. She always wore Norma. It was specially made for her in Paris. She wouldn't touch anything else. Lieutenant. Yes. They finished with the note. Oh. Ah. Uh, Miss Nero. Is this your mother's handwriting? Yes, I think it is. Would you mind reading it, please? I, uh. I can't find my glasses. Dear Mary, don't forget to see Mr. Largo as soon as possible. Mother. What does that mean to you? Nothing. I, I don't know anyone named Largo. Check out all the Largos in Manhattan, Bronx, the Queens, Brooklyn, and uh, the entire country if necessary. I'll get right on it. Right. Lieutenant! We're finished with that room now. You can bring the ladies in if you want to. Well, as long as you're here, you might as well be comfortable. Thank you, Stephen. Gino, check out the neighborhood. Find out if anyone saw a car or a taxi coming or going. It was a car, a white car. Look for a white car, Gino. Uh, look, no offense, Lieutenant, but don't you think we should get that confirmed? When we drove up, there were three cars parked at the curb, green, white, and red in that order. One thought inevitably of the flag of the Irish Republic. But, Lieutenant. Look out of the front door. You'll see the white one is gone. Uh, look for a white car, Gino. It doesn't necessarily follow that the killer took off in that car. A dozen people could have. Soon after we entered the house, a car drove off. <clears throat> the speed of acceleration indicated escape and at least 400 horsepower. I would say that the shifting characteristics were those of a foreign sports car. Gino, look for a white foreign sports car. Lieutenant, all the drawers up there are open. You got any idea why? No, I don't. I think I do. We think it was a manuscript. A manuscript? Norma's autobiography. Thank you. Uh, would it have been handwritten or typed? Probably longhand. I don't think she could type. A longhand manuscript? We may have found it in the bedroom.
OK, where is it, Raymond? It's in the drawer here, Lieutenant. No, they're, they're my poems. I left them here. Norma wanted to read them. We'll see that you get these back. What we're looking for is probably much thicker, Raymond. Would you know if she kept the manuscript in a uh, loose-leaf book, um, a notebook? I never saw it. Or would anyone else have a copy of it? Not to my knowledge. If the killer might, he could have found him and taken them no. with him. He was still looking for it when my aunts and uh, company arrived. If it was ever here, it's still here. Oh, it had to be here. Norma said she was working on it. Raymond, go over this place thoroughly. Turn everything upside down. Or uh, right side up. I'll make a note to check all the publishers in the morning. Find out who's bringing out the book, and more important, who's in it. Better make another note to pick up my notebook, my glasses, and my pen. The plugs are pinging. Good. Well, it's time to say goodnight to the ladies. They're snooping again. And an Esther. Did you say goodnight? Goodnight? Goodnight. This is illegal. That's right, and final. Barney, straight home. No field trips. Gotcha. I'll see that Miss Nero gets home. If you can't sleep, dear, or you want to talk, just call us no matter what the hour. We never close. Thank you. You've both been very kind. We ready now, ladies? Ciao. Very kind and very dear. Yeah, that they are. Ladies. Oh, it's a little chilly out there. Dear Barney, would you mind warming the car before we go? Oh, not at all, ladies. Promise me one thing. Stay right here. Don't move. I said, don't move. person by the books he owns. Norma always loved green. These books must have come with the house. <laughs> if I remember her correctly. Of course you do, dear. Without her, your play would have been a smash. She was never much of a reader. Certainly not Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, and Charles Schultz. And gee, look, 12 books by Melvin. Melvin Douglas? Is there only one Melvin for you? It's just that Melvin Douglas reminds me of dear George so much. Your late husband bore as much resemblance to Melvin Douglas as my books do to classical literature. The Melvin that I was referring to is Melvin Kaplan. There are 12 books as told to Melvin Kaplan here. Doesn't that strike you as curious? Curious? Curious, yes. Even Melvin Kaplan doesn't own 12 Melvin Kaplan books. Have there been any announcements of the book in newspapers or columns? There must have been. And she must have had a public relations man. I'd better make a note to check on that. Excuse me. You know, you, you, you bear a striking resemblance to my two aunts. So we've been told. It's too bad they left. You might have enjoyed meeting them. As a matter of fact, you might still be able to catch up with them. If you leave right now. Are we being thrown out? Thrown out? That's a very inadequate description for someone of your acquaintance with words. Are we being thrown out? Of course, and officially escorted. All right, let Barney. Oh, boy. Barney, you moved. Don't let him out of your sight till you tuck him in bed. Ladies, our relationship is deteriorating. All right, ladies, out, out, out. There go my two best men. Wonder what they were doing in there. They are brilliant, you know, in their own way. Do you know what has suddenly occurred to me? Yes, dear. What do you think? You are right. Melvin Kaplan must have been collaborating with Norma on the book. Shouldn't we tell Stephen? Oh, Melvin would never cooperate with the police. 
You remember that time he was subpoenaed? He went to jail for five days rather than reveal his source. You're right, dear. Melvin would never betray a confidence. Except on paper. As long as we're in the neighborhood, Barney dear, we would like to call on the son of an old friend of ours. Please take us to, um, 563 East 53rd. I promised the lieutenant I'd take you straight home. I don't want to go back on my word. We wouldn't want you to. Take us home. Thank you. And then take us to 563 East 53rd. How long were you in the house before we got here? Oh, 45 minutes. Not good. Why? Well, the killers may think my aunt's found the manuscript. Oh, then they're in danger. Yeah. And so are you. Now then, how long do you intend to be? We don't know. Now that's too long. I could get into trouble. We'll rush. Good girls. No, dear, it's 218. Oh! Melvin, I don't know if you remember us. Tinker Toys, Erector Sets, the Snoop Sisters. A part of my remembered and revered past. And every Christmas, a uniquely joyous card. Melvin, we have something to tell you. The British are coming. I mean, why else would you be here so close to midnight? May we come in? Yeah, come on in. Uh, listen, forgive the mess, will you? My maid walked, uh, stumbled out of here with my... Last bottle of sliver bits and half a leg of lamb. Well, make yourself comfortable. Just sit any place. We'll stand, dear. The last time we saw you, you were seven. And you had just received your first fish tank. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. I have more now. I would say so. Yeah. Feeding time. After listening to people talk all day long, purge themselves, the silence of fish must be very welcome. Yes, and uh, infinitely more interesting. You know I'm fascinated by these. What do you call them? I call them piranha. It's good for their inferiority complex. Uh, do you want to ask me something? I'm afraid it's going to be difficult and unpleasant. Melvin. Norma Treat is dead. Now tell me what's difficult and unpleasant. Did she kill herself? Do you think she would? She seemed the type. No, Melvin. It was murder. The police are convinced that the killer was after the manuscript of her autobiography. And of course, that's why we thought of you. We noticed all of your books displayed in her library. And of course, then we realized that you had been the one who wrote the book for her. And the library was the only room in the house that wasn't turned upside down in the search. We thought perhaps the killer had come to the same conclusion as we have. In which case, it was absolutely imperative that you be warned. Well, thank you. Well, it's uh, but really completely unnecessary. I only met with her once. Look, uh, I have a certain reputation, if I may say so, in my field. And what's it based on? Human appeal, sex, yes, degeneracy, a must, I mean, you name it. There's one essential ingredient. The women I write about must want to find themselves, want to be redeemed. Redemption is the key word. I uh, found out that Norma Treat was completely uninterested in being reborn, so we had a drink and a snack, and that was it. I passed. You mean you turned her down? Yes. And I believe that ends our conversation. I'm not really set up for entertaining, but uh, is there is there something I could serve you? Uh, no, thank you. I think I've got a sandwich around here someplace. As you so observantly pointed out before, Melvin, it is late. Thank you for seeing us. And uh, thank you for your concern. Uh, good night, Ernesta. Good night, G. Good night. Melvin.
Probably you couldn't see from where you were standing, dear, but the tapes with Norma T on them. There were five of them. Eminently worth investigating, don't you think? Indeed. Are you hungry? Hungry, dear. We've had dinner, and it's 11 o'clock at night. Alexander Scalamandre's restaurant is just around the corner. I am rather hungry. Shall we take the car? Let's not wake him. We should tell him where we're going. I'll leave a note on him. Looks like we're fresh out of parking space. They disappear around 5 o'clock in this neighborhood. Why don't you just drop me off? I've got a better idea. Why don't I just drive around the block one more time, and then if I can't find anything, I uh, have a solution. thought so, too. And if he was involved with Norma, that means that he wrote the book. The question is, why did he lie? Ernestra G. Alexander! I didn't know you were the beard. Tonight's the night for beards. My most favorite ladies in the whole world. What a glorious surprise on such a dismal night. What are you doing in my neighborhood and not in my restaurant? We're just on our way to your restaurant. What are you doing outside your restaurant? The session is wrought, it's evil. Even on such panderers of the palate as I. I'm looking for customers. <laughs> or at least someone to talk to. Companionship. I had no idea things were so bad. Bad. Last night there wasn't anybody in my restaurant. And tonight business isn't quite that good. You're having supper with me. Consider yourself hijacked. <laughs> Are they really your aunts? Sure. My mother's sisters. Oh, here we go. <laughs> isn't it illegal to double park? Yeah, I'm uh, glad there isn't a cop around. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing me home. Oh, I'd uh, do the same for any suspect. Suspect? Sure. Suspect, by definition, is one who must be pursued. I'd, I'd love to ask you in. Go ahead. I'm exhausted. Yeah. And, uh, I'm double parked. I'll call you tomorrow as soon as we know anything. Someone will resent that book. Obviously, now someone did. Do you have an idea who that someone might be? Yes. That someone is everyone. Without even mentioning your ex-husband. Anyone with the slightest claim to celebrity would certainly be crucified at that horrendous volume. Knowing Norma, she couldn't have a nice word for anyone. Ah, there is one lone individual in New York. She certainly did not wish any ill. Who? Let me drink to a delectable lady. It's Pinky Allen, the only human being in this wide, free world. There will open the New York Times tomorrow morning, would shed a slight tear. Ah. Would you care to join me in some crepe? Oh, thank you. No. No, I nothing understand. more. What a lovely meal it has been, dear. Thank you. Joseph, my compliments to myself. It was a delightful dinner. Let me escort you home. Oh, dear, no. Oh, no, no, Alexander. Uh, you stay here. 
And Joseph can take you. <laughs> no, it's only a short clock, and we could use the air and exercise. Oh, thank you. Oh, but will you be able to get home all right, Alexander? Oh, yes. Good night, dear G. <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> my fair Ernesta, my delectable delight, good night. Champagne went to Alexander's head when there's so much room in his stomach. It's not like it. Most of the evening he wasn't liking his surprising and unnecessary defense of Pinky Allen. What do you think? I think he suspects this enormous chapter on her must be quite vicious, or else he knows it is. But then perhaps his warning to Norma was not as impersonal as he led us to believe. It does make one think. Well, as long as one is thinking, it would be well to think about the man who is following us. I thought those footsteps had a progressively relentless sound to them. Can you see him? Only his silhouette. He has a gun. I'm going to suggest something at the count of three. What? One, two, oh! Miss Nero, please. She went out? How long ago? She's been out all evening. Oh, I see. No, 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 no messages. Thank you. We should tell Stephen about Melvin and Alexander, but there's one thing we really must not mention. Oh, you're right, dear. We cannot tell him about the gunman. It would reflect badly on Barney. Stephen would blame him for not taking better care of us. He simply does not realize Barney's age. Dear boy. One doesn't have the heart to wake him. I would suggest that you drive, dear, but he has the key in his pocket. Oh, we don't need a key. I have my hat pin. And ours is a very vulnerable lock. hurt as much as mine. Less, dear, but then I jog. Can I borrow your liniment? Of course, it's in the bathroom. Oh, you might be interested in this. The 1948 issue of Photoplay, page 36, story and pictures. Alexander left Norma Treat for Pinky Allen. It was a torrid desertion. I never would have recognized Alexander. He's a quarter of his present self. Well, that's before he had a reputation to maintain. One must be instinctively suspect of a slender gourmet chef. Oh. Mm. Ernesta. Do you think the man who shot at us was trying to kill us? No. It was just a warning shot, telling us not to get involved. Why? Because we're very good. He's just trying to frighten us off. Are we frightened? No. Good. Have you any idea who our gunman might have been? Yes, Melvin Kaplan. I thought so. But if you were sure it was a warning shot, why did you insist on our adopting the prone position so precipitously? Well, considering Melvin's eyesight, he might have missed and hit us. I'm going to have a talk with Barney. Please don't blame Barney, dear. He protested. We persevered. <laughs> sure. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, Raymond. Yeah, listen, there's been a change in plans. Yeah, I'm going over to Melvin Kaplan's from here. Uh-huh. See if I can talk him into playing some Norma Treat tapes for me. Yes, I got a tip. Now, 
You check into Alexander Scalamandri for me. Find out anything you can about him, where he was early last night. Yeah, look into anything that could tie him in with Norma Tree. And don't forget Pinky Allen, dear. They still may be a part of the... And a woman named Pinky Allen. Right. Lieutenant? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. You know my aunt. Anything? Blanks. There isn't a single publisher in New York who contracted to publish that book. Norma Treat approached quite a few, but her terms were too stiff. Well, did any of them get a look at it? She wouldn't even show him an outline. And her PR man claims he didn't even know about the book. And no leads on the white sports car, Mr. Largo, or Mary Nero's trip last night. Thanks, Roberts. You don't suspect Mary. I called her last night, too. Thought you might have gone over there. But she also wasn't home. She might have slept through the ring. She might have, if she'd been home to sleep through it. Ostrowski. Yeah? Well, go over it again. Right. No manuscript. It's just a thought, dear, but have you checked whether Norma had a safe deposit box? Mm. Under all five of her married names, and under Largo, too. I even thought Treat might have been her stage name, but it turned out it was her family name. And you found nothing? A checking account at First National on 58th Street. If one has a safety deposit box, it's usually in the same bank with one's checking account. Mm, but it's probably under a different name. I uh, have a court order, but that's not going to help me find the pseudonym. We'll go now, dear. You're busy. Yeah? Mr. Corman is here, Norma Tweed's publisher. I'll be right out. Uh, Lieutenant Ostrowski, I'm Charles Corman. Oh, pleased to meet you, sir. Why don't you come? These are, uh, these are my aunts, Miss Ernesta Snoop and Mrs. Gwendolyn Snoop Nicholson. How do you do? How do you do? Are you of the Boston Cormans? Well, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Corman and Son. Your firm published my first and only book of poems. Oh, really? Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't believe I read it. Nobody did. One question. I, I have a question. Weren't you just about ready to leave? Uh -huh. Nice meeting you. Ladies. Won't you come in, Mr. Corman? Oh, thank you. Well, the next and most oh. important question Excuse is... Excuse me, uh, toast was a bit dry at breakfast. You do have a copy of Norma Treat's book? Uh, no. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, oh, thank you. You don't? Well, I had an appointment with Miss Treat for 10 o'clock this morning to take possession of the manuscript. I saw the papers as I was leaving the hotel. And, hotel? Uh, yes, I came in from Boston on the night train, checked in the plaza this morning. When I saw the papers, I came directly here. Won't you sit down, Mr. Cook? Oh, thank you. Two points. <laughs> you, uh, you have read an outline of the book. Not a word. Those were her terms. The contracts would be signed sight unseen with a clause forbidding us to alter a single word. Is that usual publishing procedure? Oh, certainly not. But in this case, I personally felt it was worth the gamble. Was there an advance? A hefty one. Mr. Corman, I must say that uh, I was under the impression your house was, well, quite a serious one. And that, I'm afraid, may prove to be our downfall. You see, people don't read books anymore, only non-books. Uh, well, I'll make no bones about it. If that book was a proverbial bombshell before the murder, think of the impact it could have now. It could be worth millions. Mr. Corman, a man like you might well save Corman and Son single-handedly. I intend to. And now, Lieutenant, with your permission, I'll take possession of the manuscript. It's legally the property of Corman and Sons. I, uh, I have all the required documents right here. What manuscript? We couldn't find one in the house. No manuscript. But that doesn't seem possible. Surely the writer that she was working with would have a copy. How did you know she was working with the writer? Well, her knowledge of English was, at best, I'm afraid, uh, a speaking acquaintance. Do you know who the writer was? No. Oh, Ernesta. Let's not go to the bank. I cannot ask Warren Packer to do me that kind of a favor. Darling, considering your past history with Warren, or Nesta, that was a long time ago. But eradicable, dear. Warren knew Norma. As president of the bank, he surely must have seen her come in. 
And of all people who might know the pseudonym, he's the most likely. And of all people, he's most likely to tell it to. Well, don't blush. You said yourself it was long ago. And after all... What are you doing? What are you doing now? I threw away the prize. Why don't you come in with me? Oh, no, dear. I'm sure Warren wouldn't give the privileged information if we were together. I'll just get some air. Don't move! Ernesta, you haven't learned anything. You gotta hold the bag tight, or else you're gonna lose it. Hey, oh! Barney, put him down. This is Charlie. Yeah, I know who it is. I ran him in 15 years ago for breaking an entry. You're messing the suit! He's my friend, Barney. Yeah. Put him down. Charlie was the prototype, the model, for Sparky the Safecracker in... H, as in homicide. I know. I taught her all the lingo, you know, all the technical stuff. But I'm legit now. That's my newsstand down there. Oh, uh, Anesta, um, I, uh, I carry all of your books. You know, uh, could you, uh, could you autograph some of them for me? But of course. I'll be back in a minute. Ernesta, over the wrist. Then hold it tight with the arms in, okay? All right, come on. She has some very strange friends. Chasing me. There's a dead man back there. You had to think I killed him. But he was dead when I got there, I swear it. What's your name? I'm innocent. Is that your first name or your last name? Come uh, on. Come on. Turule. Anton Turule. The Anton Turule. Uh, well, in case you haven't guessed it, the Anton Turule. You're under arrest. Oh. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Barney, was that Mary who just went into the bank? Yeah. Did she see you? No, why? Well, what happens if she sees G in the bank? What happens? Barney, you must learn not to pry. I hope G uses her characteristic ingenuity. If I could do it for anyone, G, I would do it for you. But I cannot compromise my position. What you're asking me to reveal is completely confidential. Warren, dear, and you have my word for it, it will be treated as such. I'm sorry, Jean. It's quite impossible. I knew if anybody could have done it, you could. Sorry, I couldn't help. Goodbye, Warren. See you again soon. Can't leave just yet, Warren. Why? 
G, what's wrong? You're not answering me. Seeing you again leaves me speechless. My thought imprisoned in memory. May I sit down for a moment? Of course. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, yes. This is good for the spine, eliminates tension. Is Yoga. There, is there anything I can do? Perhaps some water, Warren. Of course. Oh, could you tell me how to get to the safe deposit vault? looking for my earring. Well, you weren't wearing any earring. Oh, that's good. I didn't find it. Here's your... Your, your water. I'm sorry, I, I spilled some of it. Oh, all right. I don't need it now. I'm fine. <laughs> Does it mean anything to you? Yes, it's Swedish. It means uh, candy or sweet or, or treat. treat. And Norma was Swedish. Remember, we met her father during rehearsals for your play. So she must have been going to Norma's safe deposit box. What do you think if we... Splendid idea. Simply splendid. How did you know about the book? Mm -hmm. mm. Norma told me about it. She was at a party. She's a little drunk. And when she's drunk, she's a little... She talks too much, doesn't she? I've heard the story. But you never read the book? No. Then how did you know what was in it? <laughs> I didn't, but it wasn't difficult to guess what Norma would write about me. Our marriage. Lieutenant only lasted for six months, but what it lacked in, in, in longevity, it more than made up in animosity. She was very vindictive, very malicious. I am a choreographer. You can take it from there. Who told you Kaplan was working on the book? <laughs> no one, but Kaplan is, is, is the king of those, those smut confessionals. And one thing about Norma, she always went for the best. What did you hope to accomplish with Kaplan? I thought he might have the manuscript everybody's looking for. I went there to buy it, to buy it and to bury it. I was prepared to offer him $20,000. That offer still holds, Lieutenant. I could book you for that alone. I've changed my mind. I want a lawyer. Call one who'll bring you a dry suit. Mary? Oh, what a happy oh, chance. Hello. Could we give you a lift wherever you're going? Oh, that's very sweet of you, but I'm just quite hard to book. Oh, why, scandalous. Oh, uh, Barney, get uh, that man. But that guy, I, I go. Barney, go and get him. You're not a cop anymore. Tell Ernesto that there's nothing here except a Norma Treat's will. It seems that a, a Mary Nero is the sole beneficiary. 
You mean to tell me that you and Ernesta planned this whole thing? That's wrong, Charlie. Dead wrong. You're gonna get your come up one of these days. I hardly felt it. Just the slightest tug. Oh, poor darling. No credit cards, I hope. Ah, success, I believe. <laughs> Here it is, and it's intact. I think you might want to check. Yes, yes, it is. Well, please excuse me, but I, I am late. I'll talk to you later. Oh, and thank you very, very much. I hope you realize what you just did was absolutely illegal. I hope you realize you participated in it. Wrong. Barney, you better get going. Where are we going now? Not we, you. Please follow Mary. See where she's going in such a big hurry. All right. All right. Poor Melvin. We warned him that having seen the books, the killer might come to the same conclusion as we. Or... Or, somehow, without knowing it, Melvin revealed his involvement with Norma to the killer. True. Stephen, did you listen to Norma's tapes? Yes. What'd she say? She said that she found it difficult to talk into a tape. And she said that for five hours. No manuscript in the box, Lieutenant. Thank you. You're sure that all that Mary took was Norma's will? Absolutely. Why are you so sure? You never did explain how you knew what she took from this vault. No, dear, we didn't. Well, that clears that up. Ah, there's Barney. Now, ladies, uh, she went straight... Oh, Lieutenant. The uh, person in question went straight back to her apartment. I think there was a man inside. I could hear conversation, couldn't make out the words. Old building, thick walls. Are you talking about Mary? Am I talking about Mary? Yeah, I'm talking about Mary. Thank you. Stephen. Yes, I'll call you as soon as I talk to the person in question. We might as well go, too. Uh, Miss A. Miss G. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. Something I want to say without any interruptions. Well? I thought you'd interrupt. It's a man to man talk, but it's for ladies only. Now, there's a lot going on around here that I don't know about. I just want to let you know that I know about it. What I don't like is you two taking off on the streets by yourselves. You're walking through yesterday, and you could get clobbered by today. You're remembering what was. Well, you can't play potsy or pitch pennies or play stickball no more. That's a rough town out there. That's rough, rough, rough. Now, what I want from you ladies is an agreement. Oh, no, Scout's honor. Let's promise. No more traipsing around this town by ourselves. Come on, ladies, do it for me, will you? I don't want anything to happen to you. All I'd have left is my pension. I can't live on that. Will you think about it? There you go. Time off for good behavior. Let's go. It doesn't make sense. The manuscript wasn't in the safe deposit box. Mary, I am not going back until it's found. That's fine. You were crazy to come here. Possibly. Oh, why didn't you call me first? That would have been the act of a reasonable man. As you pointed out, I haven't been rational. I call. Yes, but you didn't say in person. Uh, well, I, uh, I found a parking space. Oh. Nice apartment. Uh, oh, yes, it is. I'd, uh, love to ask you in for a cup of coffee, but I'm just on my way out. If you want to talk, we can do it while we're walking. Is this a campaign chair? Yes. Aren't you coming? Don't you want to wait for your friend? Friend? Uh, 
I think you better come in, Dad. Barney. One second, ladies. Uh, shall I put the car away, ladies, or are we going out again? Put it away. We're writing this afternoon. All right. Do you want to work now, or should we have lunch first? You don't mind cooking while I straighten out my notes. We can write afterwards. What are we having for lunch? Well, I believe we're having cream of tomato soup. And... Oh, dear. I was hoping we'd have something different for a change. Here, you shop. If you wanted something different, why didn't you buy something different? I meant to, but one's uh, freedom of selection is so severely limited by one's preferences. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you. Shh. What's going on here? Shh. I'll stay there. to meet Milo Perkins, an old acquaintance of mine, and the worst private eye in New York City. Hello. What were you looking for, anyway? The manuscript. Yeah. What made you think it was here? His client thought we had it. Yeah. Who's your client? Oh, now, come on. You know I can't tell you anything like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, huh? Breaking and entering with intent to commit a felony. That's three to five years, Milo. Now, Barney, I was just trying to make a buck. My client offered 30000 for that manuscript. I thought if I found it, I... You found it, you could pocket the money. Yeah. Well, you can understand. I mean, with the new divorce laws, there's not much work around. It's really rough out there. Things are going to get a lot rougher with you. If you don't tell me who you're working for. No chance. No chance? Now, tell Lieutenant Ostrowski. Come on along with me. Ladies, I'm taking him down to see the lieutenant. We'll drive you. Uh, no. Wrong. No chance. I want to get him there. We'll take a nice, quiet cab ride. 
Come on. Then the sole purpose of your trip was to visit your daughter. So, of course, you came straight here from the airport last night. No, I went to the hotel. He fell asleep. And uh, didn't wake up until midnight? Just about that. So when he didn't show up, you naturally went out to dinner with your mother instead? No. It wasn't that. I, I didn't know that he was coming. Oh, I see. A surprise visit. Yes, I, I came here, and Mary wasn't here, so I left a note. And when I came in, I found it and went to the hotel to see Dad. OK, Mr. Nero. At exactly what time did you go to visit your former wife last night? What? Why would he visit Norma? He hasn't even thought of her for 20 years. I told you I just came to visit my daughter. Who spent the first morning of your reunion as Mary Condorotti, opening Norma Condorotti's safe deposit box. How did you get that key, by the way? Norma gave it to me about a month ago. Why? We were having dinner one night, and she told me to meet her the next morning. She didn't say why. When I did, she took me to the bank and signed me in as a co-depositor under that name. Didn't that seem strange to you? Yes. But with Norma, everything was strange. Only what was normal appeared to be different. Did she give you any explanation? She just said, in case anything happens. I, I didn't think about it much at the time, but this morning, I suddenly realized that the manuscript might be there. That's right. So the will was a surprise. The will? Oh, I can't imagine. How did you find out about the will? Oh. What does that have to do with anything? I was trying to find the manuscript. Of course. To turn it over to the police. To burn it. Why should all those people suffer? Because Norma was a, a drunken, evil, vindictive... Did you hate her enough to kill her last night before you went to my aunt's She for was help? alive when I left her. We only have your word for that. Lieutenant. Don't! Now, he's trying to bait you. Lieutenant, I did visit Norma last night after Mary had left. Are you saying that to protect your daughter? Lieutenant, I think you're wise enough to realize it's been the other way around. Mary didn't want me to tell you that I was there. My conversation with Norma was unpleasant, but it wasn't murder. She was alive when I left her around 9 o'clock. Why did you go to visit her? To talk her out of publishing that book. It would have hurt a great many people, one of whom I love very dearly. You know what you're saying? I know that if I'm not number one, I'm at least high on the list of your suspects. I'm the dean of a college. I can ill afford a scandal. I was at the house near the time of death. I have no alibi, and I have a motive. The evasiveness of Howard's answers, the conflict in his attitude, were not lost upon the inspector and, oh, I couldn't eat and I can't write. My mind is elsewhere. Yes. But what I don't know is... Neither do I. Why would anyone but a publisher offer $30,000 for an unseen manuscript? And don't forget, Stephen was offered an equally overwhelming amount by that choreographer. Is it possible that they did see the manuscript and this is no more than an old-fashioned case of... Definitely. Hello? No, this is G. Where? When? So soon? All right, Alexander. Alexander Scalamondri. Yes. He's at Pinky Allen's. He wants to see us immediately. Underline immediately. Perhaps there will be another offer for that manuscript, which would certainly establish what we were thinking, that Norma had been practicing blackmail. <gasps> Did you bring your purse? No, dear. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go get mine. We'll need money for a cab. We'll take the Lincoln. But Barney has the keys. I still have my hat pin. your aunt's house. Come on. Blackmail? No, it isn't blackmail. Pinky, Anesta and G can be trusted. 
That's why I called them. It is blackmail. Twenty odd years ago, when I started all this, my first assignment was designing Norma's clothes. And I was involved in a bit of a... in a hell of a scandal. I thought it was buried, but Norma exhumed it for her book and added a few inaccurate but incontestable embellishments. Quite sordid. Her price was astronomical. It certainly undermines an author's ego to realize that there's more money in not being published. Do you know anyone else who was on Norma's list of contributors? Yes. That's why I called you. Anton de Tourle. Norma's second husband. I've just been designing the costumes for his new ballet. Your nephew arrested de Tourle. He's bound to talk, implicate us. Implicate you? Yes, we were conspirators. We being three? Yes, de Tourle, Pinky and myself. Uh, we just wanted to frighten Norma. The Tourelle drove the car that almost hit her last night. Who made the phone call? Me. I told her, resorting, I'm sorry to say, to an old-fashioned cliché, next time we might not miss. But of course, we never intended a next time. Well, it does fit with the story Mary told us, G. G? Oh. I'm sorry, I was just noticing all the awards. Well, really, they're hardly pertinent now, dear. I'm sorry. It just struck me how inadequately designed they are for design awards, if you see what I mean. Mm. Definitely inadequate and most irrelevant. Well, Alexander, we appreciate your taking us into your confidence, and we will represent your case as ably as we can to our nephew. Then we're in the best of all possible hands. Why didn't I remember that Mr. Largo was a motion picture? I feel as though I'd let photo plate down. <laughs> well, my dear, you were never as mindful of the films as of the chit-chat. You remember who's making whom, not who's making what. True. Poor Alexander. Yes. Oh, the dear man is totally smitten, to such an extent that I'm afraid he believes her. And you did notice? Oh, yes, the same cassette perfume. The same scent that was so strong at Norma's. That means that Pinky was there that night, doesn't it? That. Oh, there's a detective on the force we can't be too sure of. I'm telling you, I can't tell you. I've got a legitimate client. I can't reveal information like that. Now, you could lose your license. If I tell you what you want, I could lose my business. The work I do is based on trust. I didn't know you changed your profession. Look, Lieutenant, I know it's a murder rap. I want to cooperate, but my client is not involved. You've got my word. OK, let him go. What? Let him go. Get out of here. Thanks, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Wrong! Have Johnson Taylor. First person he'll contact will be his client. I want to know who that is. Right. Still very wrong.
excuse me. We're looking for someone who can help us locate an old film. Mm. Next to the last door on the left. If there's anybody knows about the oldies, it's Frank. Thank you. All right, stick them up, sweetheart. One more step and you'll get shot. All right, stick them up, sweetheart. One more step and you'll get shot. Gosh, they're going to pass so no. Now he'll come against the arrow. All right, stick them up, sweetheart. One more step and you'll get shot. <laughs> My heart is beating quite frantically. You were frightened. No, it's just that marvelous voice of his. Oh, Frank. Frank? Yeah? You didn't say you were Frank. I didn't say I wasn't. We're looking for an old film called Mr. Largo. You said you could help us. Largo, Largo. Oh, yeah, um, Portland Productions, 1946, distributed by um, Ron Odd Worldwide. Goodness, you have a remarkable memory. Well, I told you Frank was special. Uh, no, no, it's just that someone took it out for a couple of days, about a week ago. Do you remember who? No, but I can find out. We have records. Mm-hmm. Fine. Okay, Raymond. Lieutenant Johnson just called in. Perkins headed straight for the nearest phone booth. He seemed pretty upset. Uh, Johnson didn't hear the conversation, but he got close enough to see him die. Here's the phone number. Want me to check it out? Not necessary. I know this number. Tell Johnson that's all we need. Right. Uh, say, Lieutenant, your abs are outside. No, they're not. Do you know who this is, dear? Mr. Largo. His ashes. The adventures that Mr. Largo made in 1946, Norma had a bit part in it. And this will tell us where the manuscript is hidden. And this will tell us who the murderer is. The telephone number. The right telephone number. He's come to the same conclusion we did. It's going to be very hard to prove. Impossible. Unless we can persuade the killer to accommodate us with a confession. Yes. But that's going to take some planning. And the first order of business is to arrange for a screening. The second is to get some popcorn. I never did have lunch. We're all here because each of us, although for different reasons, is concerned with Norma Treat's manuscript. Before she died, Miss Treat left a message for her daughter. It was a brief note, but it contained two key words. Mr. Largo. All of us involved in the investigation felt that once we found Mr. Largo, he in turn would lead us to the missing manuscript. And when we found the manuscript, we would have the instrument we needed to conclude our homicide investigation, as well as determining the answers to some puzzling questions and connections. Our projectionist is now ready. We will proceed with our invitational screening of the adventures of Mr. Largo. Barney, the lights. Movies in the afternoon. It's hooky time.
Many actors and actresses keep props from their movies as mementos. This one came in handy for Miss Treat. When she became really frightened and decided that she needed a safer hiding place than a locked drawer. Later, of course, when she heard the murderer in the house, she left a message for Mary, hoping that the killer wouldn't get the clue, but that sooner or later her daughter would. If you don't mind, I think I commandeer that. Alexander! It's a shockingly written book, I assure you. Melvin Kaplan's worst effort, if only for the sake of American letters, it should be consigned to the flames. I refuse to be maligned inadequately. Don't burn it! You're not in it. It doesn't even match. How did you know that, Mr. Corman? Thanks, Colonel Andre. No! All right, Lieutenant, leave it there. The gun, Lieutenant, and your own gun. No, back up. Officer, your gun on the floor. Then he couldn't get away. Of course. Mr. Corman actually panned to well, publish the book like himself? To... Oh, of course hey, not. Hey. His board of directors would Looking never allow it. No, he thing... saw the no, blackmail the potentials of You're the book when Norma first brought it to Yes, and when Norma was frightened and dropping the whole thing, See the key there, he to the decided left. to take Come the manuscript the and carry on alone. <laughs> Suggestion, dear. That 
thank you. Then it was Milo Perkins' phone call that made Stephen suspect Corman. Oh, not really, dear. He was already on to him. Turned to Boston just to establish an alibi. You can relax now, Barney. We'll drive you home. Oh, no. No, no. Taxi cab! Bob cab! I gave Barney the day off tomorrow. And you know what he said? Right. <laughs> Did you know? Did you have a couple of gray hairs? No. But if I do, I know why I've got them. This is so poorly written. Melvin's style bewilders me. Speaking of style, dear, do you mind a criticism of the dialogue you wrote for Alexander? Yes, I do. In a few spots, I think it was overphrased, embroidered. Especially that line, if only for the sake of American letters. My dear, that was pure Alexander. He strayed from the script. Of course, I should have known. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. How did you ever get Mr. Scalamandre to play the role? Blackmail. He wanted to prove Pinky's innocence. He had no choice but to cooperate. All in all, I think he was quite convincing. Oh, very convincing. I thought he did it. Well, I've got the fire going. This ought to help it along a lot. It's very incendiary. You know, you surprised me, Aunt Ernesta. I thought you might agree to eliminating some of the more libelous passages. But knowing your commitment to words, I never would have believed you'd burn the whole book. Well, ordinarily, I don't suppose we would, dear. But there are personal reasons in this case. Personal reasons? Yes, we are chapters 9 through 11. And we couldn't very well sue for libel. Why not? Because it's all true. Oh. 